Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the media, citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis. This is a joint statement prepared by the Ministry, the Customs Department, and the Legal Advisor. Her Majesty's Customs and Excise Department, like most government departments, has from time to time experienced its fair share of praise and criticism from the general public. We have managed, however, to take both praise and criticism in stride and to treat them with the utmost seriousness to improve in positive ways our services to those whom we are called upon to serve on a daily basis. Never are we want to take criticism personally and make a public spectacle, for to do so would be counterproductive to our very purpose. It is for this reason that we have taken so long to come forward, bearing in mind our desire not to embarrass those who are involved. However, the recent unjustified attacks by Mr. Ron Collins of the St. Kitts Evangelical Association that were mindlessly supported as gospel by the coalition, Mr. Mark Wilkin, and Mr. Isaiah Philip of the Sankey's Christian Council are of such irresponsible nature that it demands from us a public statement of the truth that Mr. Collins failed in to come to to come to terms with and both Mr. Wilkin and Mr. Philip, who should be champions of justice and right, failed to make any honest effort to obtain. The truth of the matter is simple. Mr. Ron Collins committed a serious offense by issuing a bounced check to the controller of customs in late December to settle an indebtedness to the department. As is our responsibility to do when faced with such a problem, we sought to have the matter rectified by collecting the requisite cash without having to proceed through the courts. This is to avoid unnecessary embarrassment and additional court costs to the individual and our desire to give the offender an opportunity to cure the problem. Despite our best efforts, though, Mr. Collins has sought not only to politicize the incident, but to use his position of influence aided and abetted by elements of the media and privileged society to mislead the unsuspecting public into believing that he was the victim in this sordid affair. I will outline the events. In mid-December 2009, the Customs and Excise Department released a 20-foot container of toys to Mr. Collins for which the government had granted duty-free concession. As is customary, Mr. Collins was required to pay the necessary customs service charge, which in this case amounted to $1,463.09. As an accommodation to the good gentleman and not wanting to deprive needy children of their toys during the festive Christmas season, the department pre-released the goods in exchange for a post-dated check dated December 28, 2009. In keeping with this agreement, and having not heard anything from Mr. Collins, the check was presented to the bank for collection subject, subsequent to December 28, 2009, but was returned by the bank on which it was drawn because of NFNSF. That is, there were not sufficient funds to cover the check in the account on which it was drawn. In layman terms, the check had bounced. As in any country with modern fiscal laws, it is a crime in the Federation to issue a bounce check. Mr. Collins ought to have known this, and it was brought to his attention. And he did confirm with the bank that the check was deficient in two respects, namely the absence of another signature on the check and two, insufficient funds in the account to cover the check. Despite the Customs Department's good faith efforts to have him rectify the problem, Mr. Collins remained rude, dismissive, pompous, arrogant, 
and even threatening to the officers of Her Majesty's Customs and Excise Department in their efforts to have the matter resolved. Yet, despite this behavior, when Mr. Collins did see it fit to report to the department, he was given an extension of an additional 10 days to try to collect the funds from other denominations in order to resolve the matter. Contrary to all that has been said and insinuated, the matter was never reported to the police or dealt with outside the jurisdiction of the Customs and Excise Department. When the deadline for the extension granted to Mr. Collins arrived and passed, another attempt was made to contact him to continue the plea with him to have the matter resolved as it was beginning to occupy much time and resources. Mr. Collins' response was to dismiss the officers in his customary aggressive manner and threatening to take the matter to the public airwaves. By this time, the behavior of the gentleman had warranted the intervention of more senior and supervisory personnel from the department to speak with him. This is the normal procedure in customs. We are appalled at the inaccuracies and mi misapplication of the truth by Mr. Ron Collins about an incident at the Bastia High School, but we are even more disappointed that prominent and responsible members of our society have so seen it fit to affix their signatures to a press release accusing the department with the use of security personnel to intimidate, embarrass, and literally terrorize school children and an outstanding leader of civil society, threaten the fundamental rights of all citizens to decent treatment, and create much ambiguity with respect to the role and function of security, security forces generally throughout the Federation. That such inaccuracies in language so inflammatory could be used to describe the department's handling of this matter without first considering their responsibility to check out the facts seems almost treasonable, to say the least. On the afternoon of February 2nd, 2010, when Mr. Walters, an assistant controller of Customs and Excise Department, accompanied his officers to the Bastia High School to implore Mr. Collins one more time to do the right thing, given the seriousness of the matter, it was as a result of an unsuccessful visit, visit earlier that morning when Mr. Collins rudely dismissed and threatened officers who had gone there to see him on the very matter. Incidentally, when the officers got to the school in the afternoon, Mr. Collins was not there. Children were in their classes, and there was no police officer present. The contingent met with the deputy principal of the school to state their business and left shortly thereafter. At no time in this long, arduous encounter did the department take police or any other law enforcement personnel to apprehend or threaten Mr. Collins. At no time did any officer of this department intimidate, embarrass, or terrorize school children or Mr. Collins. At no time did the, did the department deploy security personnel from outside of the department to perform any function related to this matter. And at no time did Mr. Mark Wilkin or Mr. Isaiah Phillip communicate with the department or the Ministry of Finance to check the accuracy or veracity of the statement to which they both affixed their signatures. As a department of the government that deals on a ba daily basis with members of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, and from time to time with members of the Christian Council and Inva Evangelical Association, we are indeed saddened that the very individuals in our society to whom we look up to as examples for the rest of the society to follow, and for obvious reasons, hold to a higher standard of responsibility, could be so cavalier in using any means necessary, including the pat platform of the NGO coalition, to tarnish the good name of this department, and by extension, the Ministry of Finance and our country, and show it to all the world in a negative light, 
all the time giving scant regard for any quest for the truth. We trust and indeed we pray that we do not become so cynical and blinded by hatred and prejudice that we lose sight of our basic human decency and plunge our beautiful country into the abyss of anarchy, deception and distrust. If we fail to teach honesty, tolerance and the quest for knowledge and truth, we would have done great disservice to our fellow man, to this country and the very word of God that we are claiming to uphold. I thank you. We will welcome questions at this time.